Ah, oh, it's Christmas already. Overdue Doctor Who review time, and uh, yep, I have already arrived at the next Christmas special, and as has often been the case, I am on the record as not being an exceptionally big fan of the Christmas specials. I don't like the, um, the pantomime quirky tone that they just feel. They, they either feel that they're obligated to do, or they feel like they can get away with it, and I just don't like it. And there aren't a ton of these that I enjoy especially. And we have arrived at one of the more notorious ones um, certainly tends to get lower rankings, both among the episodes written by Stephen Moffat, in addition to the Christmas specials in general. The Doctor, The Widow, and The Wardrobe. I had fun re-watching this. That's not the same as me saying it's good, we'll get to that. But, um, I enjoyed watching this. I actually live-tweeted my thoughts on it, um, which is a first for me. I think I'm gonna start doing that. Um, when I get to my rewatches for overdue Doctor Who reviews. So, uh, keep an eye on the Twitter. Ha. Huh? Um, <laughs> but I, I did find enjoyment. And actually, I found more good things in it than I remember there being. Because to my memory, the only good thing in it was Madge. Because I think Madge is great. I love her vibe and her feel and her rapport with the Doctor, and I really love that she basically flips on mom mode and just tells him off at the end to send him to Amy and Rory to be a good friend instead of letting them think he's dead. Oh, I love Madge. She's great. I love that she, you know, cries to get these people to stop pointing guns at her, but she was packing heat the entire time. I really do enjoy her. I think she's got a great presence. Now, like I said, my memory was that she was basically the only good thing in the episode. That's not really true. There are some other good bits here and there, some good moments. and But it is mostly that. The good stuff comes in small burst little bits. Like, there is a line from the Doctor, that is a brilliant line, because he ta he's talking to Madge about, um, because he knows that her husband's dead and that she hasn't told the kids yet. And she doesn't want to because that will make Christmas for her kids forever will be when they found out their dad died. So, she's holding off on that. And the Doctor says to her, you find yourself wondering, What's the point of them being happy now if they're going to be sad later? And the answer is, of course, because they're going to be sad later. Which is a great line. It's a great line, and it's honestly a good just general piece of guidance and advice. That was... Props to you, Moffat. You nailed it with that one. And I do, I do get enjoyment out of the fact that the Doctor is finally confronted with basically a wooden alien, so the Sonic is useless. I like that he actually turns to, turns to the Sonic and goes, This was always gonna happen, you know? Uh, so I, I get a kick out of that. Um, I don't even mind the cheesy ending. Like, I, it's Christmas, I'll let that fly. And that might seem odd coming from me, given that I tend to complain about the, oh, do, did they just go, it's Christmas, we can do whatever. And the, my issue is, I'll accept that in the ending as a way to get us a happy ending from a story that might otherwise have ended uh, not quite so happily under other circumstances. But when you take that vibe and you spread it across the entire episode, yeah, then I'm, I'm not super thrilled about that. And that's what I tend to see in episodes like Christmas Invasion, which, oh boy, I, I really, really don't like that thing. But um, anyway, anyways, I roll with the vibe. I dig Madge. But there isn't a ton else going on here. The premise is very loosey-goosey. It's, it's meandering. It's kind of fairy tale esque which is a vibe I can usually go with okay. 
I don't know. It does. It feels like an ill-fitting vibe for Doctor Who a fair amount of the time, at least in terms of the execution when it actually comes down to it. Um, I that said, I do actually like the idea of there basically being a planet somewhere out there with Christmas de decorations as naturally occurring phenomenon. I love that idea. That is a very Douglas Adams esque idea. Uh, so that. That's, uh, that works for me. Um, other than that, though, you know, the kids are okay. The younger kid, Cyril, oy, he is, he's not particularly good. And it is exacerbated by the glasses that they have him in. So he's got these huge owl eyes every shot that he's in. And it just... It looks awful, and he's not a particularly good actor. The sister's not bad. She works decently enough. The, um, the three bumbling idiots on the, on the planet that Madge disarms, that, they weren't bad, but they kind of extended their sort of three stooges minus the slapstick routine um, a bit longer than I think it should have been. Like it's fine, you know. It's a it's a funky situation. They're pointing a, their guns at a woman, but they're then they're also kind of arguing about it. Like I, that's a funny enough situation, but like execution wise, they needed to speed that up. They lingered on that whole thing for way too long, and it just went on for a while without changing or evolving the joke in any way. So, you know, that didn't work especially well. Whole swaths of this thing are patently ridiculous because she, she's got the whole forest in her head. I'm, so, I'm sorry, what? Um, that said, like, she performs it really well. You know, she goes into this kind of zen thing, which I kind of dig. Um, but, oh, the mothership. The doctor being like, oh, well, it's got to be her because it's the mothership. Because she's a mother. It's like... That actually wasn't a bad idea, like, connections-wise for the show, but, like, the fact that it seemed so proud of itself for that. Mm -mm. Yeah, no. No, no, nobody needs that. The, uh, the wooden aliens also don't look great. I know it's a tough time when you're usually working in foam, you need to make something that looks like a different kind of material. That can be tricky. If it needs to move, all the trickier. So, like, I, I get the limitations of it. I still don't really think those, those outfits look particularly good, though. Sorry, I don't. I'm not sure I have a ton more to say. Like, it's not worth recounting the plot <laughs> on this one. Um, the, I think another thing that just kind of annoys me is the connections to the line, the witch and the wardrobe are incredibly tenuous. The doctor calls the TARDIS his wardrobe, I guess, to round out the the whole thing, except we already had a wardrobe surrogate with the Christmas box that is also a portal to another planet, so, like, I, I don't even know. Madge is great. I love Madge. Matt Smith, when he isn't being overly goofy, I think they dialed up the childlike on him a bit high, especially in the front end when he's first meeting the kids, and, I, like, I get why, but I, I still find it grating. Like, I can understand the, why the decision to do something was made and still not enjoy it. <laughs> All right? So that is The Doctor, The Widow, and The Wardrobe. You rewatched it lately? Probably not. It's not, the, it's not the season for that. But whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. You can also support me on Patreon where you get access to select videos, including our overdue Doctor Who review early and before anyone on YouTube is able to see them. In addition to that, of course, there's the usual like, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. Links for a bunch of stuff is down in the description. And until next time, this council is adjourned.